to love God, family, and neighbor through prayer, teaching, and action. Today is the 23rd Sunday after the Pente of the Pentecost season, uh, and today our scripture is going to invite us or even challenge us a bit to consider how as people of faith, God calls us and invites us to embody God's justice and righteousness in this world through our relationships and our love of one another and care and concern for one another. So we hope that this worship is meaningful to you and to your lives of faith. Let us take a moment to prepare our hearts and minds for worship as we begin with the confession and forgiveness. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God in whose image we are made, who claims us and calls us beloved. Amen. Holy One of God, we confess that we are not awake for you. We are not faithful in using your gifts. We forge the least of our, we forget the least of our siblings. We do not see your beautiful image in one another. We are infected by sin that divides your beloved community. Open our hearts to your coming. Open our eyes to see you in our neighbor. Open our hands to serve your creation. Amen. Beloved, we are God's children, and Jesus, our beloved, opens the door to us. Through Jesus, you are forgiven. By Jesus, you are welcome. In Jesus, you are called to rejoice. Let us live in the promise, prepa promises prepared for us from the foundation of the world. <laughs>
grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. justice and love. You illumine our way through the life with the words of your Son. Give us the light we need and awaken us to the needs of others. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. We now will have the children's message. Good morning. So I am here standing by, or standing in our sanctuary, here by our Christ candle. This is one of the numerous candles that we often have lit during our worship services here. This candle uh, gets lit um, during special celebrations uh, uh, um, during our church years. So Easter and Christmas and uh, when, uh, Pentecost, and also whenever there's a baptism, or also whenever there's a funeral. But what I wanted to uh, talk with you about is this particular candle um, is also an oil candle. So some candles, um, the, the fuel that they use is wax, um, but this candle is an oil candle, which it has a little a contraption at the top here that um, people from our altar guild um, will often check uh, to make sure that there is oil in the lamp so that or oil in the candle so that when we try to light it it will uh, stay uh, the flames will stay lit um, and so I'm just going to put a little bit of oil in here uh, so that the light can shine brightly uh, in the flames can shine brightly uh, in this candle and then we'll see you think it'll light Bet it will. And there you go. Now you can see that it has, it has lit. Well, in today's gospel reading, Jesus tells a parable, which remember, a parable is a story that tries to tell us something about God and about how we are called to live as God's children. 
This parable is about bridesmaids. And back when Jesus was alive and there was a wedding, the bridesmaids didn't stay with the bride like they do today. Instead, they would stay with the groom. And they carried oil lamps so that everyone could see the groom, could, could see when the groom came. Well, these bridesmaids did not keep oil in their lamps. So they could not keep the light shining, the flame shining, on what they were supposed to, on the groom. Jesus tells us this story to help us see that how we live and shine God's, God's light matters for showing others about Jesus' loves. So what are ways that we can help each other have enough oil in our lamps to shine the light of Christ? Perhaps some ways that we can do that is just by studying scripture, having Sunday school, studying the scripture together. Also, perhaps praying with each other and praying for each other. Another way that I like to shine God's light is by singing. Singing songs of God's love and God's praise. And so I think for our closing prayer today, I invite you to join me, Dietrich and Desmond, in singing a song, one of our favorite Sunday school songs, This Little Light of Mine. Ready? Where's your light? You see? This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine, let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. Let it shine. Yay, good job, amen. The first reading is from Amos, the fifth chapter, verses 18 through 24. In the days of Amos, people thought that the day of the Lord would be a time of great victory. But Amos announced that it would be a day of darkness, not light. He said liturgy is no substitute for obedience. The Lord demands justice and righteousness in the community. Alas for you who desire the day of the Lord. Why do you want the day of the Lord? It is darkness, not light. As if someone fled from a lion and was met by a bear, or went into the house and rested a hand against the wall and was bitten by a snake. Is not the day of the Lord darkness, not light, and gloom with no brightness in it? I hate, I despise your festivals, and I take no delight in your solemn assemblies. Even though you offer me burnt offerings and grain offerings, I will not accept them. And the offerings of well-being of your fatted animals I will not look upon. Take away from me the noise of your songs. I will not listen to the melody of your harps. But, the justice, but let justice roll down like waters and righteousness like an ever flowing stream. The second reading is from 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verses 13 through 18. Some of the Thessalonians are worried that dead Christians will be excluded from the resurrection to eternal life when Christ comes again. Paul reassures them with the word of hope that all Christians living or dead, will be raised into everlasting life with Christ. We do not want you to be uninformed, brothers and sisters, about those who have died, so that you may not grieve as others do who have no hope. For since we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so through Jesus, God will bring with him those who have died. For this we declare to you by the word of the Lord, that we who are alive, who are left until the coming of the Lord, will by no means precede those who have died. For the Lord himself, with the cry of command, with the archangel, archangel's call, and with the sound of God's trumpet, will descend from heaven, and the dead in Christ will rise first. Then we who are alive, who are left, will be caught up in the clouds, together with them to meet the Lord in the air. And so we all will be with the Lord forever. Therefore, encourage one another with these words. This is the reading. The Holy Gospel according to Matthew, the 25th chapter. Jesus said to the disciples, Then the kingdom of heaven will be like this. 
Ten bridesmaids took their lamps and went to meet the bridegroom. Five of them were foolish and five were wise. When the foolish took their lamps, they took no oil with them. But the wise took flasks of oil with their lamps. As the bridegroom was delayed, all of them became drowsy and slept. But at midnight, there was a shout. Look, here is the bridegroom. Come out to meet him. Then all of those bridesmaids got up and trimmed their lamps. The foolish said to the wise, Give us some of your oil, for our lamps are going out. But the wise replied, No, there will not be enough for you and for us. You had better go to the dealers and buy some for yourselves. And while they went to buy it, the bridegroom came, and those who were ready went with them into the wedding banquet and the door was shut. Later, the bridesmaids came also saying, Lord, Lord, open to us. But he replied, truly I tell you, I do not know you. Keep awake therefore, Jesus says, for you know neither the day nor the hour. This is the gospel, the good news of our Lord. Grace and peace to you from our Lord and Savior, Jesus, who is the Christ. Amen. On Tuesday of this week, Election Day, in an effort to turn off the noise of social media and the news, I found myself for much of the day in fervent prayer. Perhaps it was my way of making sure my lamp was full. In any regard, it was fervent prayer. It was a fervent prayer of longing. Longing for God's love, longing for God's peace, longing for God's justice and righteousness to come to our world, to come to our nation, to guide us as a nation as we went to the polls and as we awaited the results. And then a longing for God to guide us as we move forward in these days, months, and years to come. And as I continued to draw near to God in prayer, the thought that kept coming to me was, this is not how God intends. How things are is not what God intends for us, for us as God's beloved community. I know you're probably tired of me saying it, as I feel like I've been saying it so frequently in these days, but I am weary and utterly disheartened by how divided we are as a nation and as a people, and how acceptable it has become to dehumanize and degrade those who differ from us, the ones who we disagree with or are different from us. It seems we have lost, in many respects, our ability to differ or disagree civilly. It feels as though we are losing our ability to see one another as valued and as beloved children of God. And I'm going to say it, recognizing that it may strike an uncomfortable chord in some of us. Many of us, especially those of us who are white heterosexuals, have become comfortable in our power and privilege, so comfortable that we are either unable or unwilling to listen to and truly have compassion for the experiences of those who are different from ours. Experiences, particularly of our brothers and sisters of color or of other sexual orientations, as they share with us stories of being feeling dehumanized and devalued and told that they are unworthy sinful or unwelcome simply because of who they are or the color of their skin. Beloved, as I continue to pray on Tuesday and really this prayer, this prayer of longing, longing for God's justice and light, it's been a prayer since then. Longing for God's light, longing for God's love, and longing for God's spirit to intercede, to intercede, to save us 
from the destructive ways we are relating to one another, the ways that we are dehumanizing and devaluing those whom differ from us, the ways that we are so quick to point out the speck in an others in the other's eye and but refuse to acknowledge the plank in our own the ways that we assume our own goodness and righteousness while ignoring the needs of the poor and the plight of the oppressed in our midst beloved this is not what god intends for us as a community as people who, whom God has created. God created us as beloved, beloved individuals, but particularly God created us to be beloved individuals as we are in community with one another, that we embody God's belovedness in this world. And it is here that I hear Amos's rather disturbing prophetic message that we heard in our first reading, jarring me and I think jarring us to consider our own role as God's agents of justice and righteousness. Now I realize that this is a dangerous passage to preach on because it may unearth some uncomfortable truths. As I said, we don't often like to reflect on our, the truths of ourselves and our own shortcomings. Truths that even our faithfulness in worship and prayer may not mean we are living righteously as God intends. For if our piety and our worship Sunday morning is disconnected, with the way we relate to our neighbors and live our lives the other six days of the week, perhaps it's not as God intends. But alas, sometimes we must speak truth of our own brokenness in order to unearth God's love and God's grace. Beloved, God here is saying to us that God's love, which is within us, is not meant to lay dormant within us. It's not only for us. Rather, it is meant to empower us to be God's agents of love, of justice, and righteousness in this world. Amos, the prophet Amos, speaks an uncomfortable truth to the people of the northern tribe of Israel using God's own wor words. He says, I hate the noise of your worship, your songs. Instead, let justice roll down like waters, righteousness like an ever-flowing stream. Evidently, God is not, not much impressed by mere talk or melodious hymns or eloquent prayers of the faithful. God is not content with simply continuing on with life when others we're being trampled on, taken advantage of, and oppressed. What God wants to hear is the constant flow of justice and righteousness. God longs for God's people to live their life fully as God intends, which means caring for and being in right relationship with all people, especially the most vulnerable and needy in, of society. Amos here rejects the rituals of the people of Israel, not because they are improper or false or even because they're offered to other gods. No, the problem is the absence of justice and righteousness, which God had created them to embody and to live into, which is to say, that justice and righteousness come to the people of Israel and to us, not as some outside moral imperative to act out, but rather as a gift from God within us. The Spirit intercedes, a gift which we can support and allow to flourish or choose to reject and throw away. Justice and righteousness our core concepts throughout all of Scripture that describe the core characteristic and desire of God. 
So let's just take a moment to, to consider what they mean. First, justice. We typically think of the word justice in terms of retribution. The bad guy gets what's coming to him. And that's perhaps part of what the Bible means when it talks about justice, but only part. Justice isn't just simply you do to clean up what you do to clean up after the bad thing has happened. Rather, it's actively working to correct situations that hurt and humiliate people and to pr promote situations where people aren't hurt or humiliated in the first place. It's making sure that anyone who's been mistreated is made whole. And it's leveling the playing field of life. We can find examples of this justice throughout Scripture. Isaiah 1, 6, 17. Seek justice, help the oppressed, defend the orphan, plead for the widow. Or in Deuteronomy 10, 18, God says, or it says God enacts justice for orphans and widows, and, and God loves immigrants, giving them food and clothing. Justice is what Amos cries to have flow like mighty waters amidst, amidst the people of Israel. And then we have the word righteousness. We often think of righteousness as a good person who plays by the rules, or a righteous person is someone who is innocent, not guilty. In scripture, the deepest and most common idea of righteous person isn't just a decent person who doesn't lie, steal, or take bribes, but it is a person who actively goes out of their way to stand up for the need and the vulnerable, and make sure they particularly are taken care of. An example of this righteous person can be found, for example, in Job 29, where Job says he put on righteousness as a coat. And this is how Job clothed himself with righteousness. Job says he put on righteousness as a coat and Closed righteousness. He says, I rescued the weak who cried out. I made the widow's heart sing. I was a father to the needy. I shattered the fangs of the wicked. I rescued the prey from their teeth. You see, Job's was righteous because he stood with the vulnerable, the widows, the orphans, and the poor people. And because he stood up against anybody who messed with them. Amos cries for this righteousness to flow like an ever-flowing stream from the people of Israel. Let justice roll down like water and righteousness like an ever-flowing stream. We're called to let God work through us. It begins when our hearts long for the healing and wholeness God longs for, not only for us as individuals, but for us as the community. Then we'll yield our lives for God to rain down justice and righteousness through us. You see, the problem Amos addressed in the people of Israel was their worship had become inwardly focused. They wanted to forget about their own sins, their problems, their struggles, and just worship to be nurtured themselves, pushing away all that was outside. But when they did that, they also forgot about the suffering world outside their assembly. And beloved, whenever God's people lose their focus on the needs of the world, the word of God always calls us to pursue justice and righteousness. One way we can understand what God's word means by this is justice means not just us. 
God called God's people to look outside of their comfortable group to the needs of those who are different, to the needs of the poor, the widow, the orphans, the immigrants, all those who are different. Let justice roll down like the waters and righteousness an ever-flowing stream. Means we understand that God has put God's church in the world so that God can bring peace and healing and restoration to others through us. And so, beloved, regardless of how the elections turn out, I do hear in this passage a profound calling upon us as God's faithful, the church, the body of Christ, guided by God's spirit to embody this deluge of justice and righteousness that Amos speaks of. In the words of Teresa of Avila from the 16th century, Christ has no body now on earth but yours no hands but yours, no feet but yours. Yours are the eyes through which compassion of Christ looks out on the hurting world. Yours are the feet with which he is to go about doing good. Yours are the hands with which he is to bless now. May God's gift of justice and righteousness be ever flowing within you, within this community, through our hands and our feet, as we pray and act as God intends. of intercession. Longing for Christ's reign to come among us, we pray for God's power to come upon the church, the world, and all in need. Holy God, rouse us to prayer and praise, both when we gather for worship and when we cannot. Sustain all those who help us to worship at this time. Lord, in your mercy. Holy peacemaker, give peace to our conflicted nation. Quell all attempts at violence and halt the desire for retribution. Cure our nation from prejudice of every kind. Teach us how to abide together as one diverse people. Restore families and friendships torn apart by political differences. Lord, in your mercy. Holy, sovereign God, grant that all newly elected officials of government will work faithfully for the common good. 
Give them wisdom, honesty, and humility. Illumine their convictions with the spirit of cooperation. Lord, in your mercy. Holy Protector, bless the observance of Veterans Day this week. Bring peace to areas of conflict and keep safe the military who serve in harm's way. Give to all the armed forces a dedication to defend the common good. Heal the wounds, both physical and emotional, experienced by active and retired service members. Lord, in your mercy. Holy Healer, bring health and wholeness to those who are sick, those who live with chronic pain, the thousands who daily contract COVID-19. Console those who feel lonely or abandoned. Protect those living in resettlement camps. Uphold medical worker, care workers, especially in third world countries. We pray also for those who are sick or in mid or in need at this time, those we name before you, either silently or aloud. Lord, in your mercy. Holy beloved, form us into a people close to your heart and receive now the prayers on our hearts. Lord, in your mercy. Receive these prayers for the same for the same of him who lived, died, and rose for us. Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. I invite you to share the peace with one another. Send a text message, make a phone call. Share the peace of Christ with one another. At this time, we normally would collect our morning offerings and tithes, so I once again wish to say thank you. Thank you for the ways that you are embodying God's love in this world, and thank you for your support of the ministry here at Good Shepherd. Uh, if you would like to make donations here to Good Shepherd, you can do so either on our website or by mailing checks uh, to the church office here. We continue with the offertory prayer. O oh God, we thank you for your great generosity. All that we are and all that we have is a gift from you. Help us to serve one another and so reflect your spirit and goodness. Accept these offerings and grant that the cause to which they are devoted may prosper under your guidance. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Gathered into one by God's spirit, let us pray as Jesus has taught us, saying, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not in temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And before the benediction, I wish to call your attention to just a few announcements. Um, uh, Bible studies and fellowship times are, are still continuing. The men's group uh, is going to be meeting on the back patio um, uh, on Sunday at 3.30. Uh, the women's group is still virtual uh, uh, on Zoom on Monday at 5. Um, the Wednesday morning Bible study uh, and uh, the Thursday morning Bible study, and then also the choir on uh, Wednesday evening. Those are all uh, Zoom uh, gatherings that you can contact the church office. And then next Saturday, we have a happy hour uh, fellowship time. Uh, that is at 5 p.m. Uh, next Saturday. So again, you can uh, contact the church office for any of the Zoom links with that. Uh, we do have Sunday school for the uh, children as well. Um, and then also next Sunday, uh, we the 15th, I believe it is, uh, we are going to have an in-person 
a brief prayer and communion service. We're going to do two of them so as we can keep physical distance. Um, it's going to be outside uh, in our courtyard. Um, we will need you to register ahead of time. You'll see information coming out about that, how to register uh, for that ahead of time so that we know who will be coming and, and uh, we will require you to wear masks and uh, um, keep physical distance and, and all of that. It'll be a brief 15 to 20 minute uh, prayer service uh, that uh, will have a communion as part of that. Um, that will be, uh, next Sunday will be our first trial with this. Um, it will be, uh, we will have one at two o'clock um, and then another one at three o'clock. Um, so you can look for more information coming out about that and how to register uh, for that. Um, and as always, uh, if you have any concerns or needs, please don't hesitate to reach out to us uh, in this time. It's important for us to keep connected in this time. With that, hear the words of benediction. May the God of all creation in whose image we are made, who claims us and calls us beloved, who strengthen us for service, give you reason to rejoice and be glad. The blessing of God, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be with you today and always. Amen. Where you go, I'll go. Where you stay, I'll stay. When you move, I'll move. I will follow. To that which is good. Render to no one evil for evil. Strengthen the faint-hearted. Support the weak. Help the afflicted. Honor all people. Love and serve God, rejoicing in the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in God's peace. Have a great week.